Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this air cooler. I didn't want to make an evaporative cooler like the PortaCool because I didn't want any extra humidity falling onto my tools. I requested that the guys from AirServe leave us all of our old copper tubing because I knew I'd need it. So the first order of business was to straighten it best I could. You may need a tubing bender like this. I used it a couple of times to tweak my pipe, but I mainly did it by hand. The dimensions of the fan I used were 18 and 7 8 inches square. It's a standard box fan from Walmart, and each of the verticals are on 1 and 7 8 inch centers. I want my fluid to stay as cold as possible from the inlet to the outlet, so I'm going to use a parallel pipe configuration instead of a continuous helix, which would gain more heat. I formed a channel with two straight pieces of wood and used that to gauge the straightness. Then I cut all of my quarter inch tubes to length. Using my straightening gauge, I worked my way down the tubing and cut it off with this little auto-tightening tubing cutter. Once all the tubes were cut, they were further straightened. The 3 quarter inch coil will serve as headers to the quarter inch tubes. It was much harder to straighten, but I got it pretty close. I had to make a jig that would support the quarter inch tubes in the center of the 3 quarter inch headers, so I did a bit of trig to find out how deep to cut my V-groove in my standoff block. This block would also hold the header tube while I drilled all of the holes for the quarter inch. Now this block will support the headers at the right height so that the tubes can lay here on the wide side. I drew a straight line down each header along a door jam, and a mark was made every 1 to 7 8 inches. I measured the tube so that I could oversize the header holes just a bit, and the step drill is ideal when you're drilling through thin metal. The pie pan catches all of my copper shavings, but those are for another project. The holes were enlarged to their final size with the regular twist bit. What followed was a lot of deburring and surface prep. If you have seen my video on how to solder copper pipes, then I appreciate that. Next I sawed my standoff block into fourths to support everything properly. I inserted the tubes as little as possible to reduce resistance, but that made it fairly tricky to get all my tubes to stay put. Flux time! I really enjoy soldering copper pipes and love the instant that the solder flows into the joint. I think it just looks so cool. Now the one thing I always try to do is to clean the flux off while it's still hot because it's much easier to do while it's still hot. I had to go back here and reheat this spot to remove it. Here you can see the camera focus dot inside the header along with all the tube ends firmly in place. I want the chilled water to flow from the bottom to the top because natural convection will reduce some of the load on the pump. I also want the inlet and outlet on the opposite ends so that the entire tube field gets utilized and all the water travels the same distance from the inlet to the outlet. It'll come in down here, flow up the tubes equally, then head back out the top. I had to adapt a 3 quarter inch copper to half inch PVC tubing and there was no cheap and easy way to do this, so I made my own fitting by drilling a copper cap and then soldering a half inch brass hose fitting to it. Last was soldering up the inlet and outlet fittings and giving them a good wipe. And here's the completed assembly in place. I put casters on a base and cut a snug hole for the bucket to sit in, and a circular groove in this piece keeps it on top of my bucket. And this LED driver powers the 12 volt bilge pump that I have in the bottom of the bucket. I didn't insulate my bucket because the heat loss through the bucket is negligible and I didn't want any extra work. I first used many cups of ice to chill the water, but I soon switched to a frozen jug. And once it's fired up, the condensation forms in the first couple of seconds, and the ice lasts quite a while. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.